What's up guys? Second video for the card review uh, for the core cards and today we're gonna be reviewing the deception cards. Um, if you haven't been paying attention to the videos yet, um, there's a mega uh, giveaway going on and you need to answer correctly to all of the um, uh, card review videos for the core card set uh, and depending on how many answers you get uh, correct uh, you're gonna have more or less chance of winning the the prizes in the giveaway there's a Tiat, uh, a priest board and a disciple board so make sure you answer the question in the description down below correctly to be able to participate and you have to do it before uh, the result comes out of the winner uh, on each video um, and that's like variable, uh, it might be one day, two days, three days. Um, anyways, um, the first card we have here is gonna be Dark Knives, uh, where it gives a friendly creature plus two strength if it's even, even give it flank. I've seen this being played, although it's not that great. Uh, if you wanna run a super aggressive deck and uh, give three strength to a creature and flank, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, I'm gonna put this in the three star category though because it's not that great of a card. It's not bad either, so it's okay. Then we have Assassin's Aim, which is gonna be four stars, uh, where uh, it gives a uh, hidden for return for, uh, to a creature. And typically with Deception, there's gonna be really beneficial effects from uh, from the creatures. So being able to uh, hide your card for a turn is gonna be super good and. Um, uh, it only costs one mana and it also allows you to draw a card so there's multiple benefits here so it's four stars then we have switch duelist which is one of the primary cards that people run on deception decks uh, where it's really aggressive in terms of uh, attack but it also it's fairly hard to deal with it uh, in the beginning of the game because it's always on your turn on your opponent's turn uh, it's always going to be a 1-4, so it's fairly hard to deal with. Uh, so I'm going to put this card in the 4-star category as well. Then we have Field Assassin. Has it in flank. It's a 3-1. It's good to be able to be super aggressive because it, can, it has it in forever, it, it, forever. It's not just a turn. Uh, but I'm still going to put this card in the 3-star category because it's not, it's not really good. Um, then we have Mid Mark. Uh, after like both players draw two cards for one mana, uh, giving two cards. If you want to be super aggressive, then yes, this is good. Other than that, it's okay. So I'm gonna put this in the three star category as well. Uh, then we have Ma Makeshift Chief, uh, where it has God Bliss, uh, God Bliss, uh, and Flank, and it's a one five. This is a, an okay card. There's better cards to be played. Um, it's good if you want to do specific trades. Uh, it's a cool card because people don't expect people to be running makeshift shift um uh but i'm still gonna put this card in the three star category because it's not that great then we have hunting trap uh which is definitely a four star card um because it's a really good m removal and it can also work on really powerful creatures uh and it only costs two mana uh, as you've seen before the kind of like one of the thematics for deception is that you have bo board removal uh, you have removals um stalls uh and uh, kind of like throwing cards back to the opponent's hand uh for a really cheap amount of mana uh which allow you to play other cards and gain the tempo advantage deception is all about having the tempo advantage uh, so this card is definitely a 4 stars, uh, it's a really good card, this should be running on a lot of decks. Then we have Reconnaissance, where a uh, target creature goes to sleep, add a copy of the top card of your opponent's deck to your hand, so compared to the Deception card from the Genesis set, uh, where you could you can put two creatures to sleep for one mana, this is fairly worse, but it also gives you a copy of the top card from your opponent's deck. I like playing uh, with creatures that do this instead of spells, it's much better, so I'm gonna put this card in the 3 star category, because it can work much better uh, if it's a creature effect, and it's continuous. Then we have Trapdoor, pull an enemy creature from the board into its owner and uh, so it basically allows you to select which creature you're gonna pull. So compared to um, uh, Gorilla Sabotage, for example, you can just pull back creatures uh, from the board to to the opponent's hand. It's fairly bad for roar creatures because they're gonna benefit from activating the roar again. But anything else is really good for two mana. You're just you're basically 
Um, it's not destroying because they can always play it again, but for two mana, you're you're basically negating the six mana, the seven mana that they spent to play a creature. So you just play this and you play another creature and you keep having the tempo advantage. So this is definitely a four star card. Um, in my opinion. Then you have Umber Arrow, which gains the control of an enemy creature with strength to or less. Uh, this is also an, a 4 star card because it allows you to do barely, uh, really efficient trades uh, in the early game. If they have cards with 2 strength and you take one of them, you you throw it against the other one of the other cards he has uh, with 2 health or less and they both die, for example. It's a really efficient way to deal with 2 creatures and for 2 mana, Typically being able to deal with two creatures is really good. So, and it also has a benefit that if the opponent's card that you take has afterlife, it's gonna trigger the afterlife on your turn for you. So you're gonna benefit from the afterlife. So four stars for sure. Then we have Dark Dream X where it targets the creature. If it's sleeping, destroy it. Otherwise it goes to sleep. So this works together a while together with the card that puts two creatures to sleep. So for basically for four mana, one mana plus three mana, you can just destroy a creature. Uh, it's the same as the um, deception theme, which is having a lot of tempo advantage. So I'm still gonna put this in a four star category because it's a hard removal and it's really good for three mana. Then you have Dionysian Drunk. Um, where it switches the strength and health of a creature. This might be interesting, uh, but it's fairly specific cases uh, and it's super sp uh, super occasional. Uh, so I'm going to put this card in the three stars because it has uh, benefits. There's some cards that can benefit from switching their stats around and things like that. Or you can always use it on an opponent's creature that has a lot of health. Uh, but low strength, you switch it around, now it has low health and you can deal with it with one of your creatures much more easily. Uh, but I'm still going to put this in the 3 stars. Then we have Jinx Blade Duelist, where at the end of each turn this creature gets plus 1 health. Uh, this doesn't have hidden, if it had hidden it would be absolutely, bo absolutely bonkers. But basically, uh, when you play this card, uh, it's a 4-1. Well, essentially it's a 4-2 because at the end of your turn it gains 1 health. So for you're playing a 4-2 for uh, 3 mana. But once it comes back to your turn again, it's already a 4-3. So every switch around, you, it's going to be gaining 2 health. And this card can get out of hand really fast. So I'm going to have to put this card in the 4-star category. When you see this being played, you need to deal with it super fast. Um, then uh, we have Vault Vagabond, uh, one of my favorite cards. Um, it basically uh, allows you to copy the top cards from your opponent's deck and it has hidden uh, forever until you attack uh, so it's really good um, and being able to get copies of uh, cards from your opponent's deck has two um, benefits one of them is your drawing cards for free basically and the second one is you know exactly what is getting to his hand so you know the cards that he has in, in and the other thematic for deception is kind of like hint, um, it's information. Uh, there's a Mimicrus which gives you information about which card the opponent has. Uh, there's uh, cards that allow you to peek into the opponent's hand and take one card back. Uh, so it's all about knowing what the opponent has. And like I said before, 70%, 80% of a card game is knowing what the opponent will do in the next turn. And knowing which cards he has in his hand, it's a huge informational advantage. Uh, to be able to have. Then we have Inconspicuous Carriage where it has a bomb uh, upon a, to your deck. This is a fairly meme deck uh, and it's afterlife. If, if it was each time it attacked it would be much better. Uh, since it's not I'm gonna put this in the three stars. Um, it's good, the stat line's good, but uh, it would benefit from having uh, the effect activate each time it attacked. Then we have Uncanny Rogue, give a friendly a creature deadly. This is definitely a 4 star card because you can always give a, a low mana creature deadly and deal with high mana creatures. So you're, it's kind of like a removal for 4 mana, so it's really good. Then we have Exercise, which puts uh, all enemy creatures go to sleep. Um, I would argue that like being able to stall, pull specific, put specific creatures to sleep is really good, but it's not as good as putting everything to sleep because then you're basically stalling. So, for example, if you're, you know that Demogorgon is a really powerful card because it stalls the whole board. 
Um, but if you have a board full of creatures and the opponent has a board full, full of creatures, if you play two exercises in a row, like uh, in the, the two turns, you're basically being able to attack to the face twice and if you have a board full of creatures you're typically going to be dealing uh, 20 damage or 25 damage during those turns like 10 damage 10 to 15 damage each turn and that's enough to win the game so and it's super annoying to play against an opponent that just keeps stalling by playing uh, uh, putting creatures to sleep so this guy is really powerful four stars then we have cutthroat insight uh, which uh, I would argue that it's uh, for me it's a five star card um, because together with charm and uh, uh, it's a way of disrupting the opponent's play and if you're playing against uh, decks that rely heavily on the late game on specific cards then you can completely disrupt their their game so for example if uh, if they're relying on having a hydra super powerful hydra coming to the game at uh, nine mana and you take it away unless you're playing deception against deception where you got to be careful because he's going to use cut throws inside back and, and and take it back from you um if you're playing against any other god, this is a really powerful card because it disrupts anything and that's why I'm giving it 5 stars. Uh, even though you need to have the tempo advantage, it's really good. Uh, then we have Sleep Blade, uh, which is going to be uh, 4 stars for me. Uh, because uh, it's a really good card, it gives you 2 removals, it's the same as Kaipora, even though um, you're dealing damage to yourself. Um, but this card is fairly good. You also need to pay attention that uh, you can. It has flying. So, for example, uh, if one of your creatures attacks a frontline creature, this can attack one of the other creatures that doesn't have frontline, and you can kill it directly uh, with the slip point. So it's really good. Four stars. Then the toast to peace. Uh, pull each creature from um, the board to their own hand. And reduces the cost uh, of your creatures by two. So this works really well with raw types of creatures, and it's also giving you a tempo advantage. If you're doing this and you're pulling, um, uh, so it's basically a stall. Uh, but if you're pulling more than three creatures, so if you're getting this costs six mana. Um, if you're pulling more than three creatures from your side of the board that have two or more mana. Um, What's going to happen is this card is basically 3, so it's a, uh, a free stall, so it's definitely a 4 star card for me. Uh, then we have Rapture Dance, uh, which is another 4 star card. It deals damage to each enemy creature equal to the number of enemy creatures on the board. Uh, this is a staple in any Deception deck. Uh, you should always be playing, uh, if you're playing against Deception, you should always be expecting a Rapture Dance on turn on, on, on turn 7, so 6 mana. Um, because and you should play around that and you shouldn't fill the board with a lot of creatures because the more creatures you have the more the rapture dance is gonna uh, the more damage the rapture dance does so it's a really good card to have uh then we have thalia um chariot temptress uh pulls any spells in your opponent's hand that costs two or less onto the bottom of their deck i think this card's terrible uh, i definitely needs to go into the two stars category the, uh, I would say that even if it was a 6-6, six, six, it would still be bad. Um, but other than that, it's terrible. Uh, two stars. Then we have Annoying Bureaucrat, where at the start of each player's turn, they select a card in their hand and obliterate it. Um, I would argue that this is also a two-star card, because um, it's uh, they can select the worst cards and just obliterate that. I would much uh, rather have a card that is like, for example, uh, at the end of uh, your turn, your opponent obliterates a card in their hand, something like that. Um, it would be much better, but it, since it's not, two stars. Um, then Loki Indisciple. Whenever this creature attacks a goth, a random enemy creature is put to sleep, uh, uh, hidden in flank. I think this card is fairly slow for what do you get, so seven mana is not that great. I would put this at six mana to, in order to be viable. Other than that, I'm, I'm gonna give like a three stars. It's an okay card to play. Then we have Double Dealer. Double Dealer is really good, uh, even though, because uh, it gives you the card advantage, because it draws you two cards and it takes two cards from your opponent's hand uh, uh, up to the deck. The issue here is you can only play this if you have a lot of tempo advantage. And the worst part is it's seven mana. 
So I would argue that this would make sense at uh, six mana. Um, would be much, much better. But since it doesn't have six mana, it's seven mana, it's a lot of uh, a mana to commit because you're essentially putting a useless uh, thing on the board at seven mana. Um, I'm gonna put this card in the three stars. Uh, it would benefit heavily from being six mana. Then we have Anti-Magic Expert, where you gain control of an enemy creature, uh, give it goblets. Um, basically, this can work as a finisher, it can work as a trade. This is a real youth card, it has a really good stat line for 3, 10. Uh, so I'm gonna put this card in the 4 stars. It allows you to do the same thing as the Amber Arrow, where you take an opponent creature that's really big, and you trade it against another big creature, you kill both of them. And on top of that, you put a 3, 10 on the board. Um, for for the following turns so that's four stars uh and that's it guys that's a card review for deception the core cards uh i hope you guys like this uh review if you did make sure you hit the like button down below uh and if you haven't subscribed to the channel what you're waiting for you should do it um click the subscribe button and don't forget to answer the question in the description to participate in this video's giveaway as well as the mega giveaway that's going on uh after the uh, until the the end of the um, core card review uh anyways guys see you guys next time peace out bye bye